Okay class, today we're going to be completing the square. So keep in mind that we've learned four different kind of conics. We've done the circle, the ellipse, the hyperbola, and the parabola. So now I'm going to show you how to change the equation to solve conics. So the process that we use to do this is called completing the square. So we have the general form of the equation that you're going to always have to change to the what's called the vertex form. So in order to do this, let's look at this first example. First, you're going to have to isolate the square term and its family. So that's why they, they've taken the 1 and moved it because the 6x, and I'm going to mark what I'm talking about right now, the 6x and x squared is part of the same family. Well, the 1 is not, so I move it over to the other side. So that's what they mean by isolating the square term. So now that I've isolated the square term, it's not perfect. So remember we did perfect squares before. I want to make it perfect. So what it's telling you is that the formula for making it perfect is to take b divided by 2 and squared. So my b in this case is 6. So if I take 6 divided by 2 and squared, what am I going to get? That's correct. I'm going to get 9. And whatever you add to one side, you have to add to the other side. So then when I rewrite it as a binomial squared, I'm going to end up with x plus 8 and then x to x plus 3 squared. Remember, because it's perfect, that's going to be x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is y squared. Then I just take my 8 over to the other side, and now I can easily identify what my vertex and my direction is. Because it's always going to be the opposite of h and k, I know I'm going to have a negative 3 and a negative 8 for my vertex, and because my a, which is in front of my parentheses here, is positive, I know it's going to open upwards. So we're going to use that same method, and we're going to complete one together. Okay, so based on that one, just like number, I mean, just like number one, I'm going to need to do what? I'm going to need to separate everything that's not the same, correct? So I'm going to have to move my 9. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to move my 16. So what I get is y minus 16 equals x squared minus 10x. So now i got to take my b, which is negative 10. And remember, it's going to be b over 2 squared. So I know half of 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 is squared is 25. So I'm going to have to add 25 to both sides. And when I do that, this is now perfect. So I can write this as x minus 5 squared. And I can write y plus what? If I take 25 and I subtract 16 from it, I'm going to get 9. So now I take my 9 over to the other side, and I get y equals x minus 5 squared minus 9. So I can look at that and tell that my vertex is going to be, that's correct, 5 and negative 9. And because it's positive in front, I know it's going to open up. And I'm going to go ahead and do number 2 with you as well, because 2 is going to open differently, and I want to make sure you have practice on that. So remember, if you didn't get that part, pause your video here and then keep writing. Okay, so let's look at number 2. So I know that I need to keep my families together. So in this case, my family are my Y's. So what I end up having is X minus 34 equals Y squared minus 12Y. So now I want to make my Y's perfect. So I'm going to take half a negative 12 and get negative 6. And negative 6 squared is 36. So I'm going to add 36 to both sides. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now that this is perfect, I can write it as Y minus 6 squared. And then I'm going to have over here X plus 2. So now I just need to take my 2 over, and I have X equals Y minus 6 squared minus 2. So my vertex is, my vertex is still my H and my K, but do not forget that your H and K flips. So it's going to be negative 2, 6. My direction is going to be that it opens to the right. And I know that because it's starting with the X and because it's positive. My A is positive, so it's going to open to the right. Now I want you to go ahead and work number 3 on your own. Remember, if you need more time, pause the video. Okay, so let's look at the next page. 
So we're going to talk about the general form. We have the equation in the general form, and we want to know how to rewrite circles. Let's look back for a minute. What did we do on the last page? We rewrote, but we focused on rewriting what? That's correct. We rewrote parabolas. So now here we we're focusing on rewriting and completing the square with circles. So I'm going to look at my general form. It's in general form again. And I'm going to have to group them because here I'm going to have X's that must go together and I'm going to have Y's that must go together. So I'm going to move it to where my X's are together and my Y's are together. So make sure you do that. And then I'm going to take my constant and move it over to the other side. So once I do that, now I want to make them both perfect. So I know that half of 4, remember I still have to do my B over 2 squared. So half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 2. I mean 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to have to add 4 to this side. But I'm also going to have to go add it to the other side. Well, I have to do the same thing for my Y family. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So I'm also going to need to add 16 to the other side. So when I rewrite this as a perfect square, I'm going to have x plus 2 squared and y minus 4 squared. And if I add up these numbers, I'm going to get 49. So now because this is a circle, I can look at it and say that I know my center is going to be at negative 2 and positive 4 because it's always the opposite. And that my radius is going to be the square root of the r squared, which is going to give me 7. Now let's do one of these together. Let's do 4. So I know that I have to separate my families together. So I really have x squared minus 4y plus y squared minus 6y. And I'm going to take my 51 over to the other side. So now that I've done that, I've separated my families. And I can complete the square. So I'm going to take x squared minus 4y. If I take half of 4y, I get negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to add 4. And remember, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other, so I'm going to also have to add 4 over there. So now I'm going to focus on my y family. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to have y squared minus 6y plus 9, and i got to add the 9 to the other side. So that's going to give me, if I write it perfect, I'm going to be, I'm going to have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 64. So I know that my center is going to be 2 and 3. And I know that my radius is going to be 8, the square root of 64. So pause your video if you need to take a moment to write that down. And then I want you to go ahead and work 5, 6, and 7 on your own. It's exactly like this. Let's go to the next page. So now that I've rewrote parabolas and I've rewrote circles, now I have to rewrite ellipses and hyperbolas. So I know the equation looks a little more complex, but it's just because you have a few more steps to do. So in looking at this problem... In looking at this problem, I know that if I rewrite it with the terms on both sides, so I know that I have to separate my x needs to be with my x, and my y needs to be with my y, and my constant has to go to the other side, just like we did on the other ones. So that's why it looks like this. But the difference is now my leading coefficient is no longer 1, so I'm going to have to factor that out. But I'm only factoring out that number. So if I divide 16 by 16 and divide 64 by 16, I'm going to be left with x squared minus 4x. So I'm going to have a 4x here. And then if I factor out the 25, I'm going to be left with y squared minus, or I'm sorry, y squared plus 6y. So now I can make it perfect. I can take half of negative 4 and get negative 2. Square negative 2 and get 4, correct? I can also take half of 6 and get 3. Square 3 and get 9. 
So this is the point where we add them to the other sides. But I want you to look at something very carefully. I'm not just adding 4 here, am I? Because what am I doing to that 4? I'm multiplying it by 16. Just as I'm not just adding 9 here, I'm multiplying that 9 by 25. So when I add it to the other side, I have to make the following allowances. I'm really taking a 16 over here times a 4. And I'm also taking a 25 times a 9. So when I rewrite that, this is perfect, so I'm just going to put x minus 2 squared. And I'm going to put y minus 3 squared. And now if I add all that up together, I'm going to get 400. Now keep in mind that for ellipses and hyperbolas, remember this has to be, this number here needs to be a 0. So then I ask myself, what divided by 4, I'm sorry, it has to be a 1. What divided by 400 is 1? The only thing that's going to give me that is 400. So if I divide everything by 400, I'm going to write this in a different color because this is a step they don't really show you here clearly. If I divide everything by 400, I'm going to find that I get, I'm going to bring down my perfect here. I'm going to have my 2 here and my 3. Well, 16 divided by 400 is going to reduce to a 25 on bottom. And 25 divided by 400 is going to reduce to a 16 on bottom. So yes, it's always going to be the opposite. This 16 is going to end up being on the bottom. This 25 is going to end up being on the bottom. And it's going to equal 1. So let's work one together. So I know that I need to separate my x's and my y's. So I really have x squared minus 6x plus 49y squared plus 196y equals negative 156. Now the difference here is my leading coefficient is x squared. So there's nothing that I would have to pull out of this one per se. So I would still have to make that perfect. So in order to do that, i got to take half of 6, negative 6, and get negative 3. Negative 3 is going to be 9. So it's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9. So I know when I finally get over here, I'm going to have to take negative 156, and I'm going to have to add 9 to it. So now I want to do the same thing here. But first I need to pull out that 49. So that's going to give me 49, and I'll be left with y squared. And then I'm going to have to take 196 divided by 49. And what am I going to get? I believe that's a 4. So I'm going to get plus 4y. So now I'm going to have to take half of that 4, which is 2. 2 squared is going to give me 4, and I'm going to add 4. But remember, what am I really adding? Am I really adding a 4? No, because I have a 4 that I'm multiplying by a 9. So what am I really adding? So what I'm really adding to the other side is 196. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 3 squared plus 49y plus 2 squared. And what is all that going to equal? And I'm going to get 49. So now, I need to make that a 1, right? So I divide everything by 49. And that 49 is going to cancel. And I'm going to write it over here about 9, but I understand I'm still doing 8. So I'm going to be left with x minus 3 squared over 49 plus y plus 2 squared over 1 equals 1. And that would be my final equation. So because of that equation, I know that this is what my type of conics here is going to be an ellipse. And don't forget that extra sheet that I gave you yesterday. My center is going to be at 3, negative 2. My A is going to be 7. Because it's the square root of my bottom. And my B is going to be 1. So it's the square root of my B. Okay, now let's look at the next page. Okay, so looking at the next page, it's going to give you a lot of rules here, guys. So I